Assalamu alaikum. As usual, we have today Friend of Bangladesh's uh, program, and we have a very special friend today. Before I introduce him, let's go and see a video clip. Robert Evans was a member of the European Parliament for the Labour and the Cooperative Parties, representing London from 1994 to 2009. He first visited Bangladesh in the mid-90s. At that time, he was the only MEP who showed interest in Bangladesh. Since then, he worked with the NGO BRAC for the betterment of life for the poor people of Bangladesh. He also worked with another NGO that advocates for the rights of the shipbreaking workers and environmental protection for the beach. Welcome back. Today we have a very special friend. His name is Robert Evans, who was a, a MEP. Robert, so you were an MEP yeah. for how long? I was in the European Parliament 15 years. 15 yes. years? Yes. Until? Until 2009, yes. 2009? So, yes. Okay. Um, how many times have you visited Bangladesh? I think I've been to Bangladesh probably 12, 15 times. 12, 15 over, yes, times. Yes, over a number of years, over mm. about uh, probably about a 20 year period I've been. So that means like. Once a year. 80s? On, no, I think I first went about 90, 96, 97. So I've been um, once a year or so. Okay. Most years. In then. what capacity? Well, I went first of all as a member of the European Parliament with mm -hmm. a particular interest in uh, Bangladesh. And at the time, I was probably the only MEP who was taking a serious interest in Bangladesh. And I know mm -hmm. since others have. But more recently, I've been with um, Labour Friends of Bangladesh, Bangladesh. The, the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. I've been on a few private visits myself, uh, but I've also been for some charity work that I do for, for both BRAC and uh, a Belgian charity. Okay, so charity work. Yes. And yes. BRAC, you yes. said. Yes. So uh, how are you involved with BRAC? Uh, I'm a trustee of BRAC UK, which okay. is obviously the British arm of BRAC, and mm -hmm. uh, your viewers will be familiar with the tremendous amount of work that mm -hmm. BRAC does. We get involved in different projects in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, uh, in South Sudan, and a number of other countries where BRAC is involved. Mm -hmm. So any social activities in the United Kingdom? Um, I'm involved in, with, I have a lot of friends in the Bengali community uh, and so I'm involved in various different celebrations of Bangladeshi culture. You said about another charity. Yes. What is that charity? This is a charity called NGO Shipbreaking, which mm -hmm. is a fairly small charity but based in Brussels. Mm -hmm. And I became involved with them uh, when I was in the European Parliament. And it's to support the shipbreaking industry, which is very important to Bangladesh in Chittagong. Scrap metal. Yes, but it's to try and improve the conditions in the shipyards where mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the workers, or invariably, the workers are not well looked after. They may not have the proper footwear, proper gloves. Uh, the conditions are not always safe. Um, you know, if they're going to be cutting up um, ships, they need the proper equipment. But safety. Safety, but we're also very concerned about the methods of beaching old ships onto just bringing them up onto the sand mm -hmm. uh, and try and see if there are alternative or better ways of doing it which doesn't pollute the beach, doesn't pollute, you know, and Chittagong and Cox's yeah. Bazaar have got some lovely beaches, but right. just dragging these ships up onto them is not the best way these days to do things. And it doesn't happen in Europe, and this was the European angle on it, the European Union sets very high standards mm -hmm. for ship breaking and all the toxic chemicals that could be in them. Uh, and because Europe sets high standards, they get moved to places like Turkey or China or Bangladesh mm -hmm. to be broken up. And that's not the idea of setting high environmental standards that some uh, lesser developed That's excellent work. Country. Yeah. Excellent work. It provides work, yes, mm -hmm. of course, but there's better, there are, and the charity is to try and support the, the, the work to improve the conditions. Mm -hmm. Very good. Have you? So you have been to um, Chittagong many times. Oh yes, times. I've been to Chittagong to see the to see how it works and to uh -huh. talk with people, talk with the uh, company owners, and talk with the um, the workers themselves. And, and I'm going to India next month to see similar uh, shipyards that are in the Gujarat there. Okay. Have you been to Silet? I have. Yes, number of times I've been okay. to Silet. I went on the our most recent visit to Silet earlier this year. I was very pleased to go and see the new cricket ground that they've built in mm -hmm. in Silet. So. 
Uh, I know they have Do you like cricket? I'm very keen on cricket. Very okay. keen on cricket and sport. Tell us about Bangladeshi cricket and well, the uh, team of Bangladesh, well, I the think Tigers. The Bangladesh cricket team has, has done mm. well and is gradually yeah. beginning to realise their potential. And for a number of years following mm. um, Bangladeshi cricket, I felt that um, uh, they just needed a bit more time to adapt to it. You know, there's a huge population in Bangladesh. It's very popular cricket. Mm -hmm. How soon do you think Bangladesh will win the World Cup? Oh, that, well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, England's never won the World Cup, so, um, <laughs> you know. Because, so, you know, we are just waiting for that day. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm sure. Well, and cricket goes ups and downs. You know, it, was a few, mm. it wasn't that long ago when people were saying, well, we'll never beat West Indies. West mm. Indies are, um, you know, well beaters. They've got a steady supply of bowlers. And cricket goes up and down. And I'm sure West right. Indies will recover and I'm sure that Bangladesh will begin to realise it's the full potential of a country, a huge number of people and a very popular sport. Thank you. Do you like curry? Very keen, very keen, yes. I'm very keen on curry. Um, uh, I'm a vegetarian. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean Niramish Kai. Niramish uh, Kai. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I like all the, 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 obviously it's good vegetarian food and... Mm -hmm. um, How often do you have curry? Um, well, probably most weeks, most okay. weeks. A uh, very good takeaway. Do you like it spicy or just yeah, average? Um, yes, jalfrezi is a good dish I mm -hmm. like and um, anything with dal in it, yeah. Um, yeah. Like dansak. Yes, dansak, dal dansak, yeah, mm -hmm. dansak, mm -hmm. vegetable dansak. Um, well, as you know, our industry is facing a crisis now. Mm. It is declining, mm. an average of two a week closing down. Yes. Yeah. This is because of staff shortages mm. and, the and also mm. the government regulations. Yes. In one hand, we have the older generation retiring, mm. younger generation not being interested mm. as such. And then you have the government policies very dis encouraging mm. policies, unfriendly policies, mm. yet this industry is no longer Indian or British or Bangladeshi anymore. It is a British curry industry. Mm. We export it everywhere now, course, yes. the dishes. So how do you think we could tackle the problem, these issues? Mm. Well, you're, you're quite right to highlight this, and I, and I think the British curry now has evolved, and it's having been to Bangladesh many times and to Silet, where the home of British curry is, is Silet. And there are differences. You know, British curry has evolved to be different from the sort of curry you, you might get in, in Silet. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of similarities as well. Um, and I think that we've long been arguing this, that the British government has got to recognise that this is a skilled trade. And you, um, I understand the, the younger generations in this country don't always want to go into their parents' uh, restaurant trade uh, running the curry house. Um, and I think that the government will have to recognise that, that they are. this is an essential trade. We don't want it to die out. We need a supply of chefs from Silet, really. And they've got to make special... Because politicians often say mm. that, um, why don't you employ your own unemployed people? Mm. Mm. The question is, it is not possible. The because unless, people... unless we get mm. encouragement and incentives mm. from the government, mm. they're not going to just come to no. work in, in, in this industry. I know there are, are, are Bengali restaurants who are um, uh, employing British staff or staff of other nationalities, perhaps as waiters or to, mm. to run the restaurant, but it's the chefs that they really, they really need. And, we, and I understand that the British government is um, anxious about the amount of migration to this country and to looking at restrictions, but the number of chefs that we're talking about to come in from Silet is not going to be millions or hundreds of thousands. No perhaps a few thousand. It's a small number to keep a very important industry going which supports other industries, uh, very important for the culture and all the, the, the well-being of many of our high streets as you well. You see, there is an easy solution, I think, when they say about why don't you employ mm. your own unemployed people, mm. youngsters. Mm. If the government gave them the incentives mm. and encourages them to join the industry, mm then I think we can get few people, mm. few of them, mm. um, coming into this industry. The other is, um, remember the SBS system, mm. whereby young people came to this country from very poor yes. background for one year. Mm. 
and eventually not many of them went back mm. but they have been uh, trained to become chefs and head waiters and so on yes. and managers mm. but so they are undocumented people mm. if the government gave them you know the proper status then we have the chefs and cooks here already mm. and a large number of them what do you think about that? Well, I think that's a, a, a very workable suggestion that mm. the government, either the present government or a future government, ha has got to look at because uh, we are talking about something that's important. And I recognise that uh, people who work in the curry industry, restaurants, work very long hours and work. It's a tough job. It's not tough a, job. Yeah, it's it's working six, seven days a week. It's long hours. And the it's other demanding. other fact is, when they say that you you could bring chefs from the subcontinent, mm. there is a barrier. If you do takeaways, you cannot get a license mm. on that restaurant. Then there is, the amount is what, 80, uh, uh, about 32,000 something salary. Right. So a restaurant or a takeaway mm. with four or five staff, how can they afford to pay a well, chef 36,000, 34,000 pounds. They're not going pounds. to. There won't be many chefs for Bengali prison. restaurants on 32,000 or 35,000. No, no. So, I mean, I think this is where you, government has got to be realistic and flexible and look. And I know they have had meetings. Mm. And I know Keith Vaz and others have done a lot of work over the years to try and uh, make workable regulations to recognise that the, the curry industry is important to Britain. It's important to select. And we've got to move with the 21st century so that we, we, we manage to keep it and we, we attract the more people into it. We continue with their discussion yeah. we have to go for a short break mm. viewers will be right back thank you welcome back today on this special program friends of Bangladeshi we have a uh, very close friend um, with us today um, Robert Evans assuming and I think it is going to happen mm. the divorce mm. countries like Bangladesh is it going to benefit in any, any way don't forget Bangladesh mm. is an ex uh, colony and a Commonwealth country mm. Well, Bangladesh is obviously a good friend of Britain, is a member of the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's difficult to see at the moment how um, Bangladesh will benefit from uh, the arrangements trade. of Britain. From, I, I don't see how the trade, I, th I hope to think that the trade between Britain and Bangladesh will obviously be able to continue, but there are a number of agreements between the European Union and Bangladesh. Britain will be outside those agreements now. We will either have to recreate similar, hopefully better arrangements with Bangladesh, but there are going to be changes and I don't mm. think anybody in the government really knows yet where, where, how this is going to happen or what's going to be the situation in the future. Because um, if you imagine that, uh, for instance, when I was a young boy, mm. I used to think that the head of the state was the queen. Mm. Okay, the head of the state is the, uh, of Commonwealth is the queen. Yes. But over a period of time, few decades, mm. it became their, uh, a new Commonwealth, mm. Australia, mm. Canada and New Zealand. And I remember in 1980s even, we could fly to come to UK to visit without a visa. We could mm. get a port visa. Mm. So the Commonwealth relationship was abandoned. And I think Britain lost out mm. trade-wise mm. because new market mm. emerged and they took over the developing countries. Mm. I think there is still scope. Mm. Do you think that Britain will take advantage of all this situation? Well, I hope very much that mm -hmm. Britain will be able to, to continue to have the strong ties with the Commonwealth. Um, Bangladesh, obviously, you know, its big trading partner, its big neighbour is India, and other countries in the, in the Sark region are very important to Bangladesh. Bangladesh is a long way from Britain, but with historically very, very strong 
links. Mm -hmm. uh, you spoke you know, about the uh, trading position a few years ago. Unfortunately, there aren't direct flights with British Airways any longer no. to India, but there are with B to, to Bangladesh, Bangladesh, but there are with Biman. Um, there are a great number of flights linking with the Middle East. So the connections between Britain and Bangladesh are strong and will continue to be so. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we know at the moment quite what the trading position uh, and the economic connections will be in the future, any more than we do with Australia or New Zealand um, or Pakistan and indeed India. Uh, things are going to change. We're not quite sure how they'll change at the moment. There's a lot of talking, a lot of discussions to take place with, within the next few months till we get to the actual mm -hmm. Brexit divorce. OK, let's talk about climate, mm. the climate change. Mm. Bangladesh is a victim. Yes, yes. What do you think about that? Well, I've been, you know, to, I was in Bangladesh just after uh, Sidia, which was a hurricane. Cyclone Sidia. Sidia. Yeah, cyclone Sidia. And that affected Bangladesh very badly, and I saw the impact of that. Bangladesh is a very low-lying country. And, uh, you know, when the tsunami hit Sri Lanka and Thailand, very, very serious a lot of people died, absolute tragedy. Had that tsunami hit Bangladesh, the position would have been even worse because Bangladesh is so very low lying. Yeah. And having said that, Bangladesh, uh, I've been there when they've had regular floods and they, the people have got great perseverance and do resilience. rebuild resilience, yes, and, and, and carry on. But um, climate change, and we're seeing it with these hurricanes in the, in the Caribbean at the moment. And in the USA, yes, which yes. is opposing. Yeah, the I, yeah well, exactly, yeah. yes. Um, uh, and I think it's absolutely important that we do everything we can to uh, try and mitigate climate change to improve things because of countries, the low-lying parts, the Sundarbans of, of Bangladesh will be areas that will be very badly hit if the sea levels rise much yeah. more. Uh, Bangladesh faces many challenges from flooding and, um, as you say, great resilience, the people who are used to it. But, you know, could be, and I hope not, but around the corner could be floods like we've never seen before in the same way hurricanes sure, that yeah. we've not seen before and powerful winds. So, uh, you know, we've got to try and make uh, the United States be on board with the rest of the world and that's going to yeah, be Yeah, I was coming to that. Yes. <laughs> We've got to be optimistic. Mm. But do you think Trump is going to change his mind? Well, Trump is not a politician and that may be why he was elected. Uh, he's coming at this as a inverted commas businessman who with a lot of money managed to become president of the United States and seems to be um, reversing many of the good things that happened under his predecessor President Obama mm -hmm. and indeed under previous presidents Bush and Carter uh, yes uh, and the work that Al Gore did on mm -hmm. um, making climate change. climate change making people aware of that and I think it would be a tragedy not just for the United States but for the rest of the world if Trump were allowed to President Trump were allowed to um, unravel Continue. all of these things. Uh, and, yeah. But he's a very strong, very powerful man. The President of the United States is a more than influential position. So we've just got to hope that uh, he can have some advisors around him that will make him see reason on climate change and all the other important mm -hmm. issues that are affecting the world at the moment. Thank you. Let's talk about the Bangladeshi community you know. Mm -hmm. When you first got to know them, mm -hmm. what changes have you noticed mm. till today? Well, I've noticed a, a number of changes in the Bengali community in this country. Um, on the political front, there are councillors. The councillors are now being mayors of London boroughs. And I spoke now that we have members of parliament, British Bengali mem Three. members of, of, of parliament. So that's And a, also House of Lords. And members of the House of Lords. This is mm. a real step forward. And it's, it's a gradual process, but it's mm. an important process. Uh, and, and, and those people are uh, really showing a important position for the British Bengali community, speaking up for them and showing that what can be achieved by, by, by people I in this country. But I've also noticed the um, important contribution that the British Bengali community makes, not just to the re rest restaurant industry, not just to local politics, but to all the other sorts of industries. And the young people who are coming through, who work hard in our schools, who get really good achievements and then go on to universities and graduate and then hold down really key high jobs, positions, high yeah. positions, good quality jobs and contribute to this country. And also many of them are contributing to family and friends 
back in Bangladesh, <laughs> whether it's providing for schools or hospitals or helping the community. And I can see how the British Bengali community in this country has thrived and also the impact it's had, for example, back in Silet, mm -hmm. where there's a lot of money has gone back into Silet. And I've seen that develop over many years, which is probably due partly to the industry and the, the work of the people in Silet, but maybe also, and I'm not sure of this, but to the money that comes back uh, from many of the British uh, Bengali community who are doing so well here. Mm -hmm. Women, Bangladeshi women, mm. for instance, they are leading the way mm. in education and also in parliament. Yes. So we have three MPs yes. who are women mm. and also in the House of Lords, mm. one Baroness. Yeah. And then education-wise, they are breaking all the barriers, mm. you know, mm. high achievements because of the yeah. hard work mm. by their parents mm. and the guidance. So how do you see the young people into politics mm. and into higher paid jobs? Mm. Well, I think British Bengalis have got some super role models. You know, we have Rupa mm. Huck, uh, Tulip Siddiqui, Roshnara Ali, uh, and Baroness Sudin in the House of Lords. It is Baroness Sudin, yeah. Yes, that's right. Um, good role models, terrific role models of people who are talented, skilled, and who've worked hard uh, and um, have been successful. I mean, Bangladesh also has a record, a track record of successful women politicians, women politicians. yes um, uh, and of course there are great greatly successful men but I think this also shows that um, Bangladesh and women from Bangladesh are showing that within a Muslim culture women can be to the fore can uh, keep their faith work very hard on that but be recognized and achieve great things mm -hmm. so you know the community very well mm. you have been very close with the community you have been very close with Bangladesh, visited many mm. times. What do you see the future of Bangladesh? Well, I think um, I think Bangladesh future rather mirrors that of the cricket team, which is uh, improving and take, taking a while. Bangladesh has is a large population. What is it, 150, 180 million, mm -hmm. um, and worked hard over the years to uh, address infant mortality uh, and the the, the the level, the number of children. That, that Edu child ed education. Yes, yeah, education is health, very health, all of these issues breaking records. Exactly, Bangladesh mm -hmm. is doing very well uh, on on that front. Mm -hmm. I would like to say I know Bangladesh pretty well. I've been there, and as you say, and I like Bangladesh. But there's not much of a tourist industry from this country mm -hmm. to Bangladesh. A lot of people go to India for, for tourism. A lot of people go to Nepal um, for tourism. Uh, and, but very few go to Bangladesh. And there's a lot that ba to, could be done. A lot that is on offer. A lot of things. Longest can, sea beach in the world. In Cox's Bazaar, yes. Yeah. Uh, tigers, you know, the Bengali tigers. And in Sundarbans. I do know people in the Sundarbans. Yeah, yeah. I do know people who've been to Bangladesh for the visits and who've been to. Have you been to Jaflong in Silet? I've not. I've been to one of in Silet, I've been, but not okay. to Jaflong. Uh, in Silet. Yes, Silet. right. No, no, I've been to the tea gardens and a lot yeah. of different places around uh, and about. And there's some wonderful hotels. Hotels as well. And so tell us about world. the changes you have seen in Bangladesh well, since you started well, it's today. It's a much, much more developed country. And you, you, perhaps it's developed, it's improved, but then it's also got huge traffic problems. And mm -hmm. if you look at Dhaka, for example, is a real challenge is the problem of the traffic. And at some stage or other, that will have to be addressed, whether it's a better public transport system, whether it's a, a metro or something, because at the moment that metro, will be... Metro is coming in Dhaka. Yes, yes. But it's got to be... The, the plans for that need to be pretty extensive. That mm -hmm. is actually planned, uh, and it's going to be difficult. And I think it's... it's, it's being supported from outside. So what is your message to our community? Well, Because we are running out of time. <laughs> well, I'm very fond of the Bengali community. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of friends who are British Bangladeshis. I've been working, I'm now a member of Surrey County Council, mm -hmm. working with a community in Molesey in near Hampton Court to try and help. There's a Bengali community. Uh, and I think it's to, um, the Bengali community is keep the faith. It's not just keeping the Muslim faith and the other faiths of the different religions in, in Bangladesh, but to be strong, recognize that Bangladesh has achieved a great deal. Mm -hmm. British Bangladeshis have achieved a huge amount over the years, making great strides, and that the future can only be brighter still. Thank you so much. John the Viewers, uh, we had a very um, interesting discussion with our friend um, today.
we have learned a lot. We have shared experience with him and his experience about Bangladesh and the community in the United Kingdom. We'll see you soon. Stay, stay tuned. Khuda Hafiz.